This week, I learned about drugs in school. About their harmful effects and how to say no to drugs. There were also other anti-drug events in school where I learned more about how dangerous drugs can be. Why can't you just be like other normal kids who don't give any problems to their parents? Speaking of safety, I used to wonder how we keep Singapore safe from drugs. That was how I learned about our laws against drugs. It's not just about catching abusers and traffickers. Higher risk abusers are admitted to the Drug Rehabilitation Centre. We are at the opening plenary of the 2016 Commission on Narcotic Drugs where governments are preparing the outcome document for the United Nations General Assembly Special Session on Drugs which will take place next month in April in New York. Last time the General Assembly uh, met and discussed drugs 20 years ago, they gathered under the slogan a drug-free world we can do it. Unfortunately, the latest draft of the outcome document is rather disappointing. It still re reconfirms the commitment of governments to create a society free of drug abuse, which is clearly a utopian target. There is a deepening gap between reform-minded countries and conservative countries. Albert Einstein dijo que no, que es una locura empeñarse en hacer siempre lo mismo esperando resultados distintos. Pese a la contundencia que encierra esa afirmación, eso es lo que hemos venido haciendo desde hace cerca de 40 años cuando el presidente Nixon declaró la guerra contra las drogas. There is a conclusive scientific evidence that harm reduction saves lives, improves public health and public safety. It's extremely important that we state this in the Angus outcome document in the view of the Czech Republic, no outcome document at all would be better than a weak outcome document for Angas. Прежде всего предлагаю четко обозначить позицию по отношению к многочисленным призывам легализовать те или иные виды наркотиков, поскольку любое ослабление международной системы контроля над наркотиками приведет к трагическим и катастрофическим последствиям. How do you see the, the future of, of international drug control? The tensions are growing uh, and at some point something has to give, something must break. The consensus around a kind of global drug control model that we've had for the last 50 years is clearly broken. It will either collapse dramatically or it will just drift into irrelevance unless it can modernize and evolve and reflect the needs of member states and that is going to mean um, evolving and modernizing to allow a greater spectrum of experimentation with different models, including legalization and regulation, but also some of the uh, more acceptable forms of reform like harm reduction and decriminalization. I think that there is a big danger to really weaken international law at the end because countries are going to move away from the conventions. If we open the conventions today, do we have enough power or do we have enough representation or do we have enough appetite among member states and among each government in the world to have a better text? You know, some people say that uh, we need a new drug convention, other people say that it's not important because we can move in within the flexibility of these conventions. What do you think about that? These conventions should be deleted at once. A new convention, why? I mean, do you have a convention? Do we have a convention on tobacco? Do we have a convention on alcohol that are poison? No. These are medicines, we are told, but it can also be used in a different way. Control Board said that the legalization of no medical use of cannabis is not in line with international conventions. And uh, as we know, several states of the United States uh, uh, made the recreational use of cannabis legal for adults. So, do you think that this is not in line with the international uh, law? 
and if it's not what the U.S. government is uh, about to do with this problem? The government of the United States believes uh, that we are still in compliance with the three international drug control conventions. The conventions do not require or obligate any member state to criminalize and prosecute individuals for consumption of any particular product. The conventions recognize that member states have different constitutional systems and allow those constitutions to have an impact on how they will carry out their treaty obligations. The INCB is saying that what's happening in the U.S. that's within or that's that's not in line with the conventions. The U.S. government's position is that it is. What do you think? I'm not buying the sort of brownfield concept that you can somehow have a flexible interpretation that will allow you to legalize cannabis or legalize and regulate other drugs. The conventions are very clear, very clear that you can't do that. I think it would be better if countries that want to explore cannabis regulation just say, they just come out and say, we are out of compliance with the treaties. This is why we have done what we're doing. It's to protect the health and welfare of our citizens. And we will make efforts in key multilateral forums to resolve the tensions that this is creating. You mentioned there is an ongoing opioid epidemic in mm -hmm. the US with several victims of overdose. And um, uh, some NGOs and uh, even a mayor in New York State proposed the idea of opening supervised injection sites to uh, tackle this problem. Uh, and there are several such facilities in Europe. Uh, what is your government's position on that? We were very uh, happy to see that uh, Congress, um, after decades, reversed a long-standing ban on federal funding to support uh, syringe exchange programs. You know, we have not taken a position on safe injection sites. I think we're very interested to see what happens uh, at the local level with this. Not only do we need to think about how do some of these interventions reduce harm from infectious disease, but really provide a vehicle for people and motivation for pe people to access treatment. So far, harm reduction as an expression is missing from the draft document of the Angus. What do you think about it and why do you think it's important for your region? It is a disappointment that harm reduction is not uh, included. Harm reduction is a critical for our reason to stop HIV transmission, not only among people who use drugs, but from people who use drugs to the general population. The words harm reduction being mentioned there would specifically mean that then uh, governments would have to implement uh, the nine interventions of WHO at least. Harm reduction is a part of the modern human-oriented drug policy, which works perfectly concerning all topics and all aims of the, harm, of the public health approach. On Monday, um, a group of around 200 civil society organizations and networks from all over the world released a civil society statement, um, raising some very serious concerns, both about the UNGAS pre preparations and process, and also about the current draft of the outcome document. And the General Assembly agreed the words harm reduction as far back as 2001 in the political declaration on HIV AIDS. So why those words can't appear now, it's, it's you know, it's, it's slightly baffling. We should be making stronger demands. To me, it's great that people want alternatives to incarceration, but let's challenge the idea that it's appropriate to punish people for drug-related behavior, period. So I feel like it's our job as advocates to stay ahead of that, and one way that we do that is by continuing to engage with current drug users. I don't think that we can ever develop good strategies for drug control that don't um, come out of the experiences of drug users, and not just people who are in recovery, but people who are actively engaged in drug using behavior, some of which may be chaotic, but a lot of which is not. I wish United Nations General Assembly Special has very good protective results. Thank you so much.